Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Christy with This Country Girl's Life. Hope you're all having a great day. It's really hot here in Oklahoma and as you can see, my hair is doing its own thing and I'm just gonna let it do it because we're not here for me and what I look like. We're here for Kara Cottle Cox. She's still missing. If you're not familiar with the case, I do have another video in a playlist that you can go back and watch to get yourself caught up to where we are today. Um, the bullet points of the case are that Kara went with her truck driver boyfriend, Adam Stapp, on a run from Oklahoma to California. The last time she was heard from was May 15th, and she was in Arizona. Adam's story is that he left her at a rest stop in Essex, California, and no one has heard from her since. So today, we're going to talk about the private investigator that is handling the case for the family. We're going to talk about Adam, of course, and we're going to talk about Essex, the area that she was left in. And I just kind of want to get your opinion on if you were in that type of area and you were alone and you didn't know anybody, would you leave all of your belongings behind and just walk off into the middle of the Mojave Desert? Sorry, the dogs are inside today because it's so hot outside. The heat index is like 108, so they don't want to be out there. So you'll probably hear from my dogs today. All right, let's get into this. So the private investigator that's working on the case, his name is Jathan Hunt. And he owns Hunt Investigative Services. And he is also a bail bondsman. Doing bail bond work is how he makes his money. And working as a PI is how he gives back. Jason, over here. here we go. Jason doesn't charge the families for his services. He doesn't feel right charging a family with a missing loved one money to help get them back. He is what we call here in Oklahoma the Oklahoma standard, which basically means it's the level of person that everyone should strive to be. Good person, willing to help anybody when they need it, just the best person you could think of, that's Jathan Hunt. Jathan has been working with the police and now with the FBI day and night tracking leads, trying to bring Kara home. Jathan doesn't work alone. He has seven volunteers that also work with him day and night. Volunteer, not paid. And they put everything they have into every case they work. These people are experts at what they do. They have all these resources that you would not believe. They have canine dogs, cadaver dogs. They have drones. He's licensed as an arm, armed bailsman here in Oklahoma. He's got connections in law enforcement and higher. He's got connections at every level. And there's nothing that he won't do to solve a case. His dogs are highly trained. He, well, you know what? I'm going to link his website in my description. And I really recommend that you go there and check it out. Because you can read Jason's story. How he got started. Where he came from. Why he does what he does. What it means to him. Personally. And you'll be blown away. You can, on the website, you can sign up to get an email. And whenever there's an update on a missing person, you get an update. You'll get an email. And he has several cases going right now. All of their flyers are on his website. And feel free, I know this video is about Kara, but feel free to print all of them off. All of these people need eyes on their case because they're not getting attention 
like I said yesterday, these Oklahoma cases, for some reason, just don't garner the attention that some others do. And these people are just as worthy of the attention, and they deserve to be found just as much as anybody else. So as a true crime community, we can do that. We can give those people the information to find them and bring them home. All we need to do is put their pictures out there, say their names, tell their stories, and someone somewhere is going to know something about every single one of these people. Like Kara, for instance. It's 2022. It's extremely hard to just vanish. We have cameras everywhere. People have doorbell cameras, there's traffic cameras, there's license plate readers. You're always, well, you should assume, that you're always being filmed. Always. It's so easy to track people's movements just by following the video. But still, somehow, we have people out there that have just vanished. And you can't tell me that nobody knows anything. Somebody always knows something. And maybe they're afraid to come forward. Maybe they're being threatened. Maybe they have problems of their own, legal or otherwise, and they're worried to call in a tip. That's something else that's really great about Jathan. He has a tip line, and you can call it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whenever you're ready to talk, you can call Jathan with your tip, and it will stay absolutely confidential. You're not talking to the authorities, and he's not going to give up any information, personal information of yours to them without your permission. He will follow up on the lead, and he will pass it along to the right people, but your name can completely stay out of it. So there's, there's no reason not to say something, not to come forward and tell what you know. Now with Kara's case in particular, she was in a semi truck and I have a friend who has a semi and I know that he has a camera. And actually my son drives a truck at work and they have cameras and a lot of people if you just go back through that footage, you don't know what might be there. You might have seen the truck. You might have seen Kara. You might have seen Adam. And even the tip of, hey, I saw that truck, or hey, I saw her, or I saw him on such and such a day at such and such a place, you don't know. That, that could be exactly the break we need. It could be exactly what we're looking for. So call it in. I mean, no tip is too small. And wouldn't it be better to say something and maybe help bring somebody home than to just think, eh, it probably doesn't matter. And maybe you could have helped. You don't, you don't know. So just call it in. If you think you have useful information, call it in. I will put the tip line at the end of the video and it will be in my description and it's on Kara's posters. Like I said, you can call him day or night. This man is always working. I talked to him till pretty late last evening. And then again this morning. I mean, he is on it. He is on the ball. And he takes this so seriously. Let me read you something that he sent me last night. And I just thought it was so powerful, and I wanted to share it with you all. He says, it's not just me working on this. I have seven other people who volunteer under my company and dozens of more on the OKCM search and rescue team that work these cases nonstop. I want people to know that people like us are not going to let these go forgotten. We don't get paid to do this, and most of the expense comes out of our own pockets. We ask for nothing, but we will dang sure make noise and do what we can. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? He expects nothing. 
He just wants to help. He wants to help bring closure to these families. And if I had a missing person, if I had a missing child, or my husband was missing, um, I couldn't think of a better person than Jathan. I mean, he's absolutely who I would want out there looking for my person. He's wonderful. Oklahoma is blessed to have people like that willing to do this for these families. So I really encourage you to go and take a look at his website and really explore it. Um, I have a few screenshots from the website that I'm going to show you just so you can get an idea of, of everything they do. Um, here. Okay, this is who he works for. As he says, it's his bread and butter. Ken Boyer Bail Bonds, and they're in Oklahoma City. Without this job, I would not be able to serve my community the way that I do. If your loved one ends up in jail, call Ken Boyer to make the bail. I love that. And this is a screenshot of their, <clears throat> excuse me, their homepage. And this is the services they provide. Missing persons, runaways, search and rescue, criminal investigations, HRD, human remain, canine consulting, and more. Missing, taking, taken, or lost persons. Amber alerts, silver alerts, lost children into the wilderness. It doesn't matter. We get involved. We spread the word through our large network of social media, news media contacts, and assist our law enforcement contacts. Victim clothing description, any vehicle descriptions, tag numbers, photos, and last known sightings are essential in this process. Runaway teens, child support absconders, must have an active child support warrant. Let us help. Search and rescue. Your daughter and her friends went for a hike and never came back. No cell signal, and it's getting dark. Call 911, then call us. We can get our team on the road and headed to their last known location. How fantastic is that? I mean, immediately they will get involved to find your child. Okay, let's move on to this guy. Mr. Adam Stapp. I don't even want to share a screen with this guy, but I'll leave him up here for a little bit because I want people to take a good look at this guy and if you see him or you saw him, let somebody know. This guy, I feel like he has more information than maybe he's willing to give up. Um, found out a few interesting things about Mr. Adam Stapp. So, Adam, yeah, he's married. Separated, but married. And Tara was his girlfriend traveling with him. Now, I know that you, like me, enjoy true crime. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? So think back to some cases. Um, I don't know. Scott Peterson, Drew Peterson, um, Chris Watts. There's a lot of them out there that when their significant other goes missing, they proclaim that, you know, nobody misses them more than they do, and, and they would do anything to bring them home. And that's, that's kind of where Adam's at, kind of. Um, he seems to take great pleasure in harassing Tara's sister, Mindy, on social media, and... Well, let, let me show you. And just so you know, ask me 
A S S M E stat. That's Adam. And I mean, if you're gonna call yourself something, I mean, I think Adam he picked a pretty good word. I mean, I'd say he's an ass, but I don't know him. So Adam says, and this is this is the kind of thing that he posts when she posts about Kara, her sister missing. Mr. Ask Me comes along and posts stuff like this. Mindy Cottle, are you any closer to getting a warrant for the cell phone data? How about the bank card? You are not even trying to find her. You're a piece of sleep. Okay. Let's just take, take this message. Let's break this down a little bit, okay? Mindy Coddle, are you any closer to getting a warrant for the cell phone data? Okay, Adam. I know that you have some problems with confusion, like, um, you know, you forget which state you left people in and, and things like that. So um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson here. When it comes to warrants, Mindy isn't the one that's going to be getting the warrant. Law enforcement are the ones that get warrants. And you know who's really good at getting warrants? The FBI. And do you know who picked up this case? The FBI. So to answer that question for you, um, yeah, probably getting closer to getting a warrant for cell phone data. I mean, I, I would think the FBI would be interested in that, but I mean... What do I know? And oh, while we're on that topic, what do I know? Well, after high school, I went to college right away, like literally graduated in May and started college in June. And I majored in speech communication. But then several years later, after my dad passed away, I decided to go back to school and I was a pre-med major. And do you know what my minor was? Criminal justice. Yeah, and I really excelled at forensics, and I took part in searches, and we did mock cases where we had to question witnesses and try to figure out who done it and how to handle evidence and things like that. So I might know a little bit of what I'm talking about, but I mean... You seem to like to use the internet, Adam, so you could probably Google it and see, like, if the FBI can get warrants. But I think they're really good at it. Okay. How about the bank card? Again, I would think the FBI is probably going to look into that. Probably. You are not even trying to find her. Okay. This I really have a problem with. Mindy isn't trying to find Kara. Nope. Nope. She only went out to California to the Mojave Desert looking for her, stopping all along the way on I-40, which was the route you would have taken, distributing her flyer everywhere she could, talking to anybody that she could. Oh, and she hired Jathan, the PI. That's right. Yeah. I mean, obviously... She's not trying at all. I mean, what about you, though, Adam? What are you doing? Have, have you done anything? Oh, yes, you searched for three days in Oklahoma when you knew she wasn't here. Oh, what a guy. What a guy. All right, let's move on to the next part. Mindy is a liar and a snake town snitch. And I will be suing her, just like she said she did Kara. Okay. I got nothing. I don't know what you're going to sue her for, but more power to you. Why is it so hard to get a warrant for the cell phone data and find out where she last used her bank card? Well, again, Mindy can't get a warrant herself. So she's waiting for law enforcement to get the warrant. So just a little bit of patience. It'll happen. Hang in there, Adam. 
All right, let's see a little bit more. Because they don't really want to find her, and there is plenty of evidence that she is alive and well. Again, obviously they don't want to find her. I mean, why would they go to California and distribute her flyers everywhere and hire a private investigator? I mean, people that are trying to find people, that no, that's not how they behave, not at all. Really, Adam? And this evidence that she's alive and well, we would love to have that evidence, Adam. If you have that evidence, give it to the FBI. Give it to Jathan. Give it to somebody. I mean, that's all anybody wants. That's why I'm here right now making this video, because we want evidence that she is alive and well. I mean, Kara's an adult. If for some reason she decided that I'm going to ditch my car in Oklahoma, I'm going to leave all my stuff in your truck, and I'm just going to go off in the Mojave Desert and strike out on my own she can do that because she's an adult but if there was evidence to prove that she did that that would make so many people's lives easier probably even yours adam so if you can prove it bring us the evidence please and so our boy adam like i said He's married separated but married now this is all public record you can see at the top it says I think Unicourt and you can go on there and you can search for court records in the state of Oklahoma and all I did was type in Adam Stapp and a lot of stuff came up quite a few things but there were two that I really wanted to bring to your attention because I like to get to know the people I'm dealing with and generally when you're working a case you start from the inside and you work your way out well who's closer to the situation than Adam I mean he's the last person that we know saw her right he's the last person that we know was with her right so he's the closest and that's where we need to start so Normally, I will take a very deep dive into people that are close to the situation because I like to know what kind of background does this person have, you know, what maybe we have something in common that we can kind of not really bond over, but we can find common ground somewhere to start the conversation and like I said, I don't like to go in unprepared. If I'm going to be dealing with somebody, I feel a lot better when I know what I'm walking into, what I'm going to be dealing with. So I like to really deep dive people that are center to an investigation. And we're, we're not going to deep dive Adam today. I... I could, but I don't want to. Um, I have information, but we're not going to go there today. We're not going to deep dive, but we're just going to kind of stick our toe in the water and just feel around and see what it's like. So let's dip our toe into this. His wife filed a family harassment lawsuit against him. And what in the world would family harassment be? Hmm. Well... You dig deeper into this file you'll find oh, protective order mr stapp had protective orders taken out against him a few times hmm. i mean it was probably just a misunderstanding right i mean he's a good guy he, he no he'd never right but i mean there it is out there on the internet for everybody to see so you can decide I'm not gonna tell you what to think we're all grown-ups here and here's another question I have for Adam where is this truck 
Seriously, Adam, where is this truck? This is the truck that Adam and Kara went to California in. And you know what? The, this truck is suddenly nowhere to be found. I mean, how convenient, right? I mean, nowhere to be found. Where is the truck, Adam? Why won't you tell anybody where the truck is? It's a very simple question. Where is the truck? I mean, maybe I should talk to you like one of my kids. Adam, where is the truck? How come nobody can find the truck? Can you please tell us where the truck is? So, what I want y'all to do is take a good look at these pictures. And if you see, there's numbers on the door and stuff. And when you're traveling and you're passing out Kara's flyers because we all want to bring Kara home, why don't you take a look at the semis? It's white. So you can rule out all the colored semis. Look for the white ones. Look for one that says SPS on the door, and then see if you can match up these numbers. See if you can find this truck. And you know what? That's one of those tips you can call into Jathan. Yep. You see that truck, you give Jathan a call and you tell him where that truck is. Okay? Do me a favor. Look for this truck. Screenshot this truck. And this picture is actually taken from Kara's missing flyer. So if you have her flyer, then you have the truck information. And keep an eye out for this truck, because I would love to know where is this truck. I mean, it's kind of like people going missing. Trucks don't just vanish, do they? I don't know. Something weird must be going on, because people, trucks, everything's just gone. Just gone. But keep an eye out for that truck, okay? Um... Another thing about our friend Adam that, I don't know, fascinates me, honestly, fascinates me. So, Adam won't meet with the investigators. Now, this is a guy who will proclaim his innocence to anyone that will listen will take every opportunity to harass the sister online and go online and preach about his innocence. But he won't meet with the investigators. And what do I mean by that? Now, Adam, he's a crafty one, okay? He doesn't say direct, no, I'm not coming in. No, I'm not going to talk to you. No, 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 no. What Adam likes to do is... We'll call it misdirection. So, let's say, oh, let's see, what's a good example? Oh, I know, Seminole. Okay. So, he couldn't go in and meet with the investigators in Seminole because our man Adam had some fines. Yeah. Yeah, he had some fines and, um, and a warrant, I believe, for something larceny maybe i i don't know doesn't matter he had fines so no he he couldn't go until he cleared up those fines i mean obviously so when jathan asked him hey why won't you just go talk to him down in seminole and adam's like oh i got these fines jathan jathan being the great guy that jathan is he said you know what Adam, I really want you to talk to the investigators, so you, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to pay your $600 in fines, and then you can go down there. No problem. Everything will be cleared up. Your fines, gone. I got it. Don't worry about it. You don't even have to pay me back. Just go talk to the investigators. You know what Adam did? He quit talking. After Jathan made him that proposition, Adam didn't have anything more to say. Not a word. And more of his misdirection. Let's say an investigator is like, hey, um, could you come down on this day and have a chat with us about this whole Kara thing? Well, you know, Mr. Adam, he's a hard worker. 
he he can't come because you know he's out of state he's he's in california or or he's in texas or he's he's wherever working and no he can't come he can't come to oklahoma and talk to me no no he's he's busy he's working he's out there you know driving earning those big bucks being pay those fines right well one occasion that i know of in particular Adam claimed to be out of state working to the investigators. And then imagine this. The very same day that Adam is in California, he calls his wife and says, hey, I am in Oklahoma City. And you know what? The truck broke down and I need a ride because like, I'm trying to walk from oklahoma city to holdenville and that's a long walk and i've got all my stuff and i don't know how i'm gonna do it so you know you need to come pick me up right now come get me yep walking on the road from oklahoma city to holdenville but he told the investigators he was in california so now we have vanishing people vanishing trucks and adam who can be in two places at once. I mean, this is the craziest story, right? I don't know. And then Mr. Adam, being the good guy that he is, you know, out there searching and everything, you know what he did? He searched for two hours, him and his dog. Yeah, at that rest area where he saw Kara standing in the line waiting to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Um, when she didn't come out, he was so concerned. So him and his dog, they searched for two hours, maybe two and a half hours. I don't know, but it was a long time, long time. And after this, what had to be an exhausting search, he was like, well, I mean, she's gone and she's texting me and she says she's okay. So I'm out of here. I'm going to finish this haul and then I'm going to head to Arizona and I'll hit her up when I get there. So, I mean, you know, he did his part, but, uh, Adam, why didn't you call 911? I mean, I would think, and this is just me, that, you know, take it for what you will. It's just, it's just my opinion, my channel, so I can have my opinion here. If my husband, my daughter, one of my sons, we've been traveling and we stop at the, the rest area to, you know, take a potty break or walk the dog or get a drink or whatever we're doing. And uh, one of them goes to the bathroom and I, I see, you know, they've been waiting in line and then um, they get in the bathroom and they don't come back. And I'm, you know, check on my watch and oh it's been a while like what is going on and let's say it was my husband or one of my sons okay for the the sake of argument here i mean you're a man she's a woman i'm a woman they're men so i i'm not gonna just bust into the bathroom right but um i might find somebody else at that rest area where you know a lot of truckers seem to stop and uh, I would find somebody to go in the bathroom and see if my person's in there and are they okay? And if they come out and they're like, no, they're not in there. Nobody's in there. And then me and my dog, or, you know, my all nine of them probably because I would definitely travel with all nine of them. Um, we get out and we walk around this rest area that um i'm gonna show you a picture later so you you can get a real good visual of of this place that adam had to search i mean so many places that she could have been um so i searched for hours and and nothing so uh gosh what do you do um there's this number it's pretty simple it's nine one one I'll say it again, nine, one, 
one and it's really cool like it hooks you up with emergency people you got a fire they will send the fire department um if there's a crime they'll send the police and if there's a person that's gone missing in the middle of freaking nowhere and you can't find them they will come out there and they'll assist you just for future reference because i don't know this may happen to you again you don't seem to have very good luck um but yeah he didn't call 911 nope search for two hours and out of there so yeah good guy good guy um one thing i do know is that there's cameras at the rest stop and uh along the the road if you look online you can see that uh they have traffic cameras out there in california along highway 40 route 66 and uh i think it's pretty likely that the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office are probably reviewing that camera footage. So I'm sure that, you know, they'll, they'll probably see her which way she left. And I know that they're going to see you on there because you were there for two hours with your dog searching. So um, I, I know they're, they're probably... For sure gonna find that yeah um so uh yeah uh oh one more thing i wanted to clear up about mr adam so yesterday in my video i said that he handed over kara's belongings to the seminole police and he was questioned and he was released and while that's not factually wrong they asked him a few questions and he left uh he wasn't formally interrogated like you know he wasn't taken in a room and asked the hard questions he did he did answer a few questions that day and, and he did get to leave even though uh there was that matter of a warrant but he still left um so yeah that's that's about it for mr adam today i think i've had about all of Adam that I can stomach right now because it's hot and I don't feel good in my stomach. I, yeah. So let's talk about this wonderful Essex. Essex. Quite a place. Um should definitely Google Essex. Um I found out that in 2020 their population was 11 not 1100 11 it's considered a ghost town they had an elementary school there and it's closed they had a post office there and it's closed they get their mail from i think it's needles needles california which i don't know i think snoopy's brothers from there or something but um yeah there's nothing there nothing it said that there's no facilities in town. I mean, it is nothing. And what you're looking at here in this picture is an aerial view of the rest stop where Kara went missing. I mean, look at that. Look how many places you would have to search for a person. It would be so hard to find somebody when there's nothing there. It's wide open. There's not even really any trees, maybe a few, but not enough to hide a person. It's... It's nothing. It's nothing. It, it, it would be so easy to search, and it definitely wouldn't take two hours. And I would think... I would think if a person was going to leave a place like this they're probably pretty likely to to be seen if not seen when leaving they'd be seen in this area because there's there's nothing and a person walking in that area would be very out of place because from what i read even when people go out to the mojave desert which this is basically the mojave desert right across the street um it's so hot this time of year that 
you know, it's it's hard to walk out there. Like, the sand is hot. There's no shade. You know, and Kara, she left with nothing. So, you know, no water, nothing to cool her down, to, you know, nothing to survive in an environment like that. So, uh, yeah, walking... I don't I don't know that you'd get very far on foot in the heat in the desert where most of the roads are dirt. So that's one look at the beautiful rest area that they stopped at. Um and this this is amazing. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. So our boy Adam, I told you he didn't call nine one one. Yeah, didn't call him. Uh you know, maybe he didn't have cell service. I mean, I know he has a cell phone, but let's just pretend for a moment that he didn't have cell service while he was at the rest area. So that's why he didn't call 911. But you know what I found at this rest area? There's a pay phone that works. And it has the sign above it. It says, report drunk drivers, call 911. So the phone number that I was given out earlier, the 911, is right there on a big blue sign in white letters right above the phone. So no excuses for not calling 911. And even if, let's say the phone was out of service the day that you were there, if you left the rest area and you got down the road, at some point you got cell service again. I live in the middle of nowhere, and I know that when my cell service goes out, if I go just a little bit further, eventually I'm going to pick up cell service again. And when you got to that point, you still didn't call 911. Why? Why? That's a question I would love to have an answer to. You. Just why? Simple call. Hey, she was here. She's gone. I need help. Boom. Moving on. This sign. You know what this sign is, guys? It's a caution rattlesnake sign. At the rest area. They're warning you that there's rattlesnakes in the area and how dangerous they are and to be careful. And Kara just left on her own with nothing out there in the heat in the sand with no shade and now let's throw rattlesnakes into the mix you know if you don't have anti-venom and you get bit by a rattlesnake you're it, it's not going to end well for you and if she didn't have anything i know she sure as heck didn't have any anti-venom with her so why would you put yourself in such a dangerous situation you wouldn't they're warning you at this rest area to watch out for rattlesnakes. If they think there's rattlesnakes at the rest area, you know they're all over the place out in the desert. I mean, come on. And this is the lovely picnic area at the rest area. And if you look over to the left on that pole, that's the rattlesnake sign right there by the table. So, you know, if you wanted to stop and have a picnic, I guess, you know, if you like the dirt, this is the place to go. Essex, road stop, Highway 40. Go there. Now let's talk a little more about not just the rest area, but Essex itself. This is the kind of terrain that you encounter in Essex. Look at this. You've got sand dunes. You've got rocks. It's, it's rough out there. I mean... These are just injuries waiting to happen if you're not equipped and prepared to go out into this and hike or explore or whatever you're going to do. If you just take off from somebody's truck with nothing, this terrain is going to get you. It's rough. It's rough terrain. And, and this is where, you know, her family went and they searched for her in this kind of conditions. You know, it's not easy for the searchers either. So, we've got the sand dunes. We've got the rocks. Oh, yes. Essex also has these caverns. And I'm not going to lie, they're beautiful. Um, 
but if you're out there alone and you wind up in one of these caverns and you get turned around i mean it could get really scary right i mean they take people on tours of these caverns they have a tour guide to take you through the caverns because they know where it's safe and where it's not and how to get in and how to get out but if you're out there on your own and it's nighttime or whatever and you're looking for shelter and you wind up in a place like this can you imagine i mean come on essex so we've got caverns we've got caves we've got sand dunes we've got rocks we've got rattlesnakes we've got heat speaking of the caves here you go good example of one of the caves in essex i mean look at that I, just, I don't even like to think about it. And you know what else we have in Essex? Just to throw one more thing in the mix. Mines. Yeah. We have um, a lot of abandoned like gold mines and, I don't know, different kinds of mines. But I know for sure there were some gold mines there. So let's take a look at this. Essex, California includes 5,054 nearby mines. That's a lot. 5,054 mines. 29 of those are active and 5,025 are closed. So they're closed, but the shafts are still there. I mean, yeah, some of them, they're sealed up. They're sealed off or whatever, but, you know, it, it's not going to stop probably teenagers or whoever from getting out there and messing around and getting in one of these shafts and getting themselves in trouble and maybe getting trapped, I don't know, but um, it's just an accident waiting to happen in an already harsh environment, harsh terrain. And now we've got 5,025 closed mines, which means nobody's monitoring those mines. Nobody's keeping an eye on them. So God forbid somebody fall in one and get hurt. Who's going to find them? How long is it going to take before somebody knows they're there? I mean, wrap your brain around that for a minute. And then look at the, this is the locations. This is a map of the mine locations. All those little purple dots, those are mines around Essex. Essex is the little green pin in the middle. Look at that. That is a lot of mines that's a lot of potential places that a person could go missing and how can you cover five thousand mines i mean it's it it's a huge undertaking but you know what if anybody can do it i have faith that jathan and kara's family are going to get it done those mines will be searched if they have to don't you worry about that let's take a look at a couple of these mine shafts like this is one you're looking down from the top i mean look at that you know it's it's abandoned it's in total disrepair if you were to climb in there for shelter or you were to fall in there somehow um it could collapse the rocks could fall you could get injured you could get hit on the head any number of things could happen in a place like that they're dangerous I know they even tell the kids, like, don't mess with the old mines. It's dangerous. You're going to get trapped. There's another one. I mean, if, if you're out there and you're lost and you see that, you think, hey, maybe that would be good shelter, right? But look at all of the loose rock around it. And what do we know they have in California? Earthquakes. What is a spy? The fault line. Okay, what if you're in there and you're taking shelter and it probably doesn't even have to be an earthquake? What if those rocks slide? It could easily block that opening and you're trapped. And who knows how long it's going to be before anybody realizes you're there. I mean, the Mojave Desert is a scary place. Essex is a scary place. Why would you go off and leave a person in a place like that and if you really couldn't find her, why wouldn't you call for help? Why would you ever think your person is going to be okay in a place like this? I'd be scared to let my dogs go run around out there, never mind a person. It just, it makes no sense to me, guys. It just makes no sense to me. Make it make sense because it doesn't. 
so you know there there's a lot there's a lot with this story and every day i feel like there's more you know the twists and the turns and and yeah i love a good mystery as much as everybody else but you know who doesn't love a good mystery the families of the people that are missing they don't want the mystery they want the answer they want to skip ahead to the last page and find out how everything ends up so we need to do everything we can to get that answer for Kara's family. I told you yesterday, her sister's looking for her. Her uncle, she's got two sons. She's got friends. I got messages from people. She just got baptized and she's apparently really close with her people, her church family. And they miss her and they want her home. Her cousins, her friends, her church family, her sister, her kids, her niece, her nephews, they all want her home. We all want her home. I've never met Kara personally, but I would love to have the opportunity to do so. So we need to get her home. We need to get her back to Oklahoma. And what's scary is if he left her there and maybe she tried to hitch a ride back to Oklahoma. I don't know. Maybe she got in a truck with somebody because she was scared. She could be anywhere now. And I literally mean anywhere think about it you know truckers coast to coast east coast west coast and everything in between so when i tell you to pass these flyers out yes definitely if you're anywhere between oklahoma and california specifically essex pass those flyers out pin them up wherever you can rest areas truck stops restaurants wherever you stop if you can pin one up somewhere, you know how they have those little maps of the rest areas. And sometimes you'll see things posted next to them. Put Kara up there. But even if you're traveling the opposite direction, I don't care if you're going north, if you're going south, if you're going east, whatever. She could be anywhere off of any major highway. And we need eyes on the case. We need people looking for Kara. We need people looking for Adam's truck. We need people that possibly saw Kara, especially the stop in Essex. And we know she was in Arizona. We know that for a fact. California, that's Adam's story. And, you know, I, I feel like maybe she did make it to California with Adam, but she's out there somewhere. So if you happen to be in California and you're going hiking or you're going to the sand dunes and you're, for whatever reason, going to the Mojave Desert, keep an eye out. Print out some flyers and put them out there. We need eyes on Kara. We need to keep saying her name, Kara Cottle Cox. We need to tell her story. We need to tell what happened. And we need to bring her home. And together, as a true crime community, I have all the faith in the world that we can do that. Social media is a powerful thing. And if we keep talking about Kara and we keep putting her case out there, somebody's going to see something and say something. Somebody who knows something is going to say something. And we're going to find her. And we're not going to stop until we do. I don't care if it takes days, weeks, months, a year whatever i'm gonna keep coming back here and i'm gonna keep telling you kara's story and i'm not gonna stop and jathan's not gonna stop and her family's not gonna stop we're gonna keep going until we get answers and we get kara home so take a look at her flyer i'm going to show you some pictures again like i did yesterday just so you have a better idea this is her five foot five brown hair brown eyes about 170 pounds she's got a green hair bear tattoo right here that's on her right shoulder this is another one screenshot it if you have to because i really feel like this is going to be a very good identifier for kara somebody's going to see this tattoo and be like hey that's that could be that missing girl and if you see somebody with this tattoo 
Paul. Maybe it's not Kara, but maybe it is. It needs to be checked out. So keep an eye out for somebody with this green Care Bear tattoo on their right shoulder. And she also has a round purple birthmark on her left shoulder blade. But this Care Bear tattoo, I feel like, could really be useful. So keep an eye out for this tattoo. And then let's go back again to her flyer. It says everything that you need to know, including Jathan's tip line. 405-259-7474. 405-259-7474. And like I said, all information is going to be kept confidential so you don't have to worry about anything. Jathan is a great guy. And he needs your help to help the family find Kara. So study this poster and be on the lookout and pray for Kara and her family. Thank you so much for joining me again today to talk about Kara's case and get to know Mr. Adam Stapp a little better. If you know anything, if you've seen anything, if you've heard anything, please call the tip line. The FBI is involved, but Jathan is in contact with the agents, so call the tip to him, and if it needs to be followed up on, he will get it to the FBI. I promise you. Call him. Day or night. Because he's not going to stop working on this, and neither am I. So like I said, thank you again for joining me today. Me and my crazy hair and my barking dogs. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me that you would spend some time watching my video and learning about Kara. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, the links are going to be in the description. There's a link tree there that will link you to all my socials, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. It's all there. Anything is appreciated. So I can keep bringing you more good content. Everybody have a great day. Have a great night. And I will see you again really soon in the next one. Bye.